This is Caleb Barney with Russell Real Estate, and today I wanted to go over a Keeping Current Matters article titled, Foreclosures and Bankruptcies Won't Crash the Housing Market. So um, basically what they say here is, if you've been following the news recently, you might have seen some you know, scary headlines or clickbaity articles about an increase in foreclosures and bankruptcies that are occurring. And while this could be making you feel uneasy, especially if you're thinking about buying or selling a house, the truth is, even though those numbers are up compared to, say, last year or 2021, um, the data actually shows that the housing market is not headed for a crisis or a crash. So basically, it says uh, foreclosure activity is rising, but less than headlines suggest. So if you actually look at this data here from Adam, which is a property uh, property data provider, it shows um, basically the foreclosure filings dating back to 2005. And what you can see here is there was actually a pretty noticeable drop off in foreclosures in 2020 from Q1, uh, which is when we were still allowed to foreclose on houses, to Q2 and Q3 when uh basically if you remember in 2020 uh you know march 17th i believe was actually the date um or march 13th um and basically everything was shut down at least that's the way it was here in ohio and for most of the united states um and as a result people were basically um you know not necessarily let go from work but they were furloughed uh from work and with them not getting nearly a study of incomes or paychecks coming in, uh, they actually had a foreclosure moratorium and they had rolled out a forbearance program uh, for people who would have been behind on their mortgage payments. So they actually didn't, uh, didn't really even allow foreclosures to happen, essentially. And that's why you saw that precipitous drop off there in Q2 and Q3 of 2020. Well, that forbearance program, um, you know, has finally come to an end and you are expecting, okay, would there be a wave of foreclosures that hits the market? Well, as you see in 2022 and throughout most of 2023, it's been still very, very low. So finally, Q3 of 2023, we hit over $100,000 or 100,000 foreclosure filings in the United States. But you have to go back to 2005, the first quarter of 2005, basically, to get that low. Uh, and the lending practices for people getting houses in that time period was way less stringent than it is now. Uh, and that was because those poor lending practices led to people getting houses that shouldn't have qualified for it. And that's really what led to that housing bubble uh, that eventually burst. And uh, when Obama was still the president, uh, they changed some uh, changed the way that loan officers had to basically uh, work. So I'm not expecting a huge wave of foreclosures, even if we did see a you know an increase or an uptick in foreclosure activity, though, which were not even to the pre-pandemic levels of 2019. Um, even if we did see foreclosures increasing, there are, there's still so much uh, demand and there's a lot of cash buyers that would swallow up that inventory. So that's actually the hard part is if it did require, you know, a hard money loan or a cash, uh, you know, cash or, you know, FHA, you know, 203K uh, rehab loan or something like that. We really would limit our buyer pool for it, and honestly, it would be investors picking that inventory up and flipping it or keeping it for you know a rental property, in my opinion. So that's the first thing. Um, foreclosure activity, it rose in the third quarter, but it's down basically uh, to a lower amount except in you know, basically the last quarter of 2019, it looks like, and then all the way in 2005. So the other uh, newsworthy headlines are that bankruptcies are increasing. And once again, that is true, but let's take a look at the numbers and see 
what it actually is bearing out as. So here's the bankruptcies uh, for business and non-business filings, um, basically from 2019 to 2023. This is through June 30th, so the most recent data that we have here. And you can see that 2023, we do have more bankruptcy filings than in 2022. It's lower though than 2021, 2020, and 2019, uh, actually by quite a bit. And once again, you can kind of go back in time and think of, okay, so the numbers of 2021 and 2022 were lower than 2019 and 2020. And the reason why is because there were, uh, you know, once again, the government stepped up in that time of need. Uh, you could say it was self-imposed, but uh, whatever your thoughts or feelings are on the pandemic and COVID-19, the fact of the matter is in 2020, uh, we shut down basically in the second quarter there. And there was not only stimulus money being given out to the citizens, there was the forbearance program that I mentioned earlier to not allow foreclosures. Um, there were student loans that were basically, you know, all of the payments were put on pause for a couple of years. And then for businesses, they actually had uh, PPP loans and they had other aid available for these businesses to stay afloat. And maybe that worked for, you know, for those businesses where they could hang on and, you know, make it for a couple more years. But if they didn't turn things around, then maybe, you know, the time is coming where eventually, I mean, you could see from the numbers here, People and businesses uh, do go bankrupt from time to time. It's sad, just like people will for be foreclosed on, um, regardless of the economy. You can have a good economy like 2005 um, and still have over 100,000 foreclosures uh, filings. Um, so that's basically what we're looking at, and that's just per quarter there. Um, so the... The bottom line is that it's crucial to take everything that's in the news with a grain of salt and to truly look into it a little more. Because if you're just seeing, oh my gosh, like, you know, they raised uh, bankruptcies or bankruptcies went up 40,000 uh, bankruptcies in one year, that might sound like a lot. But when you're comparing it to the three years prior to that, it's actually not. Uh, and it's unfortunately a normal cycle because not every business is going to make it. Um, I'm sure you've heard, you know, the stat where they say, you know, nine out of every 10 small businesses doesn't make it five years or whatever that number is. And that's just the truth of the matter there. So um, when you are looking at headlines, just be careful. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the housing market's going to crash. I do think that housing is hyper local, so be aware of what's going on in your local market. Um, but other than that, basically, if you have any questions regarding housing, reach out to a local expert that you know, like, and trust, ideally, and they can go over any data that you'd like. Thanks, and have a great day.